All right, so before we begin, I want to give a little bit of background on this project. Uh, I would like to first off state that I have been in the Game Boy community a very long time. I have been modding Game Boys for a very long time, even if I've only recently started filming it. Uh, I will say in the last few years particularly, my skill level has risen significantly. Uh, I, I can tell that just by looking back at my previous projects, um, this one especially. But let's just say I, I fully understand that not everyone starts at the level that they're currently at. You know, we, we, all, we all make mistakes. We all, we all grow. Um, so that being said, I would like to show off and repair one of my earliest Game Boy modding mistakes. Um, now, before I get into that, again, I've been in this community a very long time. I had a Game Boy Advance SP, a 001, the frontlit one. I have had one of those since they were brand new. I still have that exact same one. I have modded that one several times over and practically destroyed it, and I've repaired it every single time. Uh, unfortunately, at this point, it's more of a Game Boy Advance of Theseus, because over the period of about 10 years, I think I've ended up replacing pretty much every single part except for maybe the screen. And yes, it does still have the original frontlit display in it, but like I said, I, I've replaced a lot of parts. Anyway, one of my first forays in the modding, I decided to try and make this monster. Oh, this is not. Never mind. This is a project for another time. Whoopsie doodle. Other box. Not the JLC box. The LCSC box. All right. There are several projects in this box. Uh, first one is the one that I am a little bit ashamed about. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of here and let's, let's discuss it. We'll also need to grab some of these spare parts. I think that's everything. The rest of this should be 3D prints. By the way, if you want to call it such, this is more or less a slate prototype. Um, the slate project, I think, started with this monstrosity, though. After I failed to make this, I started looking at this, and then... I mean, it worked. It just wasn't really the direction I wanted to go. Anyway, this box is full of nothing but, but uh, 3D printed hopes and dreams and a uh, macro that I messed up the paint on. Oh, I can finally get this box out of here. Stop letting it haunt me. Anyway, what's inside here is what might look like some god-awful Game Boy Advance SP Game Boy Pocket project, and you'd be right. I have learned a great many things since um, abandoning this project. I don't want to say completing, because definitely never got completed. Every individual component in this thing worked. I just never got it all working simultaneously because I got basically to the very end and realized I had no way of closing this case without gluing it together and I just kind of lost motivation to work on it. But anyway, it is a Game Boy Advance SP inside of a Game Boy Pocket and to make this work, there were quite a few compromises that I had to make um, to get this thing to fit and I think well, I don't know what I think, but it, this has been this has been in the project been long enough that at this point I'm just happy to get it off my conscience. I mean, you know, actually reuse the parts. I didn't want to throw it out because even though I had abandoned it, this thing does still work perfectly fine. Um, you know, there is some cost fallacy. I put way too much work into this thing. But anyway, it consists of a Gabo's Pokau. Um, I'll, I'll throw a link to it. It's basically a Raspberry Pi player board that I cut up a few years ago just so I can make everything fit and so I could use it as an I.O. board for a contrast wheel that I was going to use as a volume wheel. Yes, 
I know it is not the right um, resist. Actually, you know what? I think it is the right resistance. I think through some freak accident, I ended up using the correct wheel for this. But anyway, I can salvage this and put it on a pocket that needs a contrast wheel. Uh, you know, I needed a power switch, headphone jack, and this was going to be my speaker board. We've got a perfectly salvageable DS Lite speaker. I will save these buttons and membranes for another project and get rid of this disgraced shell that is so carved up that I don't even know what I could use it for. I've since learned how to cut a mostly straight line, by the way. Anyway, this is the interesting part. Uh, I'm going to show you some things that I, I cringe looking at still, but here we are. Yes, I completely relocated this uh, um, capacitor. It was in the way. I didn't like it where it was. Yes, I completely relocated the crystal, and I didn't realize that I didn't need all four wires because I was, I was a noob. Not only am I surprised that this works, I'm appalled that it works. Um, and of course I relocated the power switch. Even back then I knew this was shoddy soldering, but it was just a uh, quick and easy, I need this to work right now. And of course I relocated the um, cartridge connector. This was to be a Game Boy Advance in a Game Boy Pocket. And that looks like a cartridge. It did work with both Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games. Game Boy Color fit flush. That was my main goal. Game Boy Advance fit in nicely too. And then I was going to use these two limit switches to detect carts. Um, I have since learned a much much better way of doing that. We can do it with one limit switch, we can hide it in here, and then we can use electronics to switch everything instead of mechanical switches, but hey, we don't all start out there. And anyway, yeah, I've since learned a much better way to do this cartridge slot. Of course, we don't need to uh, hand solder all these freaking wires, man. Um, the worst part is, one of these broke off at some point. I don't know when, I don't know where, and I don't know, like, which specific one broke off, which is ultimately the straw that caused me to, uh, abandon this thing. Um, I'm not gonna try salvaging it. I have learned, and even made, a much better way to do this. I am just going to cut this jeezless thing off and salvage the only part of this thing that I care about. We're not even going to try and salvage that cartridge connector because I dremeled this thing up something fierce to fit the CPU because, you know, this went like that, like that, and so the CPU got in the way so I had to dremel it out. But anyway, this, it pains me to show this off. None of this process was filmed. Actually, you know what? Oh my God, it might be. It wasn't even that long ago. Um, some of this process might have been filmed, but it will never see the light of day. This was definitely before IPS kits. Uh, had, had IPS kits been out when I started working on this, I would have had a much easier time than trying to fit an AGS-101 LCD in this thing. Because, yeah, that's right, I cut up an AGS-101 for this mod. Um, don't worry, that LCD lives on in a Game Boy Advance SP, nonetheless. But, oh good lord. You can see I trimmed the board, I shaved it down all up here. That is actually going to be pretty inconvenient because I would like to have a working link port, but I think I can figure something out. Um, 
Oh, good lord. This thing's a little bit worse than I remember it. But, yeah, screw it, let's get it fixed. I am going to start by removing this hot glue so I can remove the rest of these wires and so we can pop on a brand new cart reader because I need this thing reading carts. But before I do that, I want to get this mess cleaned up and I need to find the cart slot switch because that is not what I thought it was. I have no idea when I got an extra one of these, but it's not the switch I thought. Oh, here it is. Okay, good. I did have it in there. Look at that. The power switch, I had no idea that was in there. That's convenient. The cart switch, the charge port, uh, the anchors for the cart slot, but we won't need those. And a USB port. I have no idea why that's in there. Should have fired up the solder in there. Okay. Let us start with this hot glue, which, thanks to a wonderful YouTuber, Modder, um, Modder who makes YouTube videos, uh, goes by the name Voltar. You've probably heard of him if you heard of me. Um, he taught me this. And if I learned nothing else from his channel, it's that you don't use hot glue if you're confident in your soldering. I was not confident in my soldering. But the lesson I picked up from him was not that you don't use hot glue, because you do use hot glue. There are occasions where hot glue makes sense. But that you can remove hot glue basically by exposing it to some isopropyl alcohol, and then it should pop right And I have no doubt there is a lifted trace or two, but I think we'll still be okay. Ooh, oh, that scared me. We're good, but it still scared me. As long as it's off the solder points, I think that's the important part. Luckily this board was super clean when I started this, so aside from all the damage I did to it, there should be no other repairs we need to make. I don't know what happens chemically, but once you expose hot glue to uh, IPA, it just becomes this brittle mess that you just break up. It's great. And surprisingly, all of these solder joints look pretty good, except for maybe that one. It could be that my wiring mess didn't work because there just wasn't enough capacitance on the remote side. tweezers, I could just use the soldering iron to shove it out of the way. Gonna melt the wires some, but who gives a damn. I'm not salvaging these wires. If I was salvaging them, I wouldn't have cut them. Clean up because I 
did not get all the hot glue the first time. And yeah, some of these pads are definitely lifted, unfortunately. Past, past Mako wasn't very good at soldering. I like to think I'm a lot better now. Actually, I'll leave that plugged in for now. I'll fix that later. If I leave the battery connector plugged in, I'll at least have something to test. I don't need to reconnect that. I will reconnect this later. I do not have the original volume slider for this thing. Uh, I did manage to lift it off this board without any consequence somehow, but I did later reuse it to fix another SP, so... Not all is lost. I think I will use I don't think I have another battery connector though it's not really the end of the world because the mod that I've planned for this thing we can definitely work around that but it would be nice to restore it to stock Friendly reminder, if you're using one of these things, um, you are supposed to clean them periodically and not just the tip. I'm not going to be going over that right now. The tips are also replaceable, and you should be replacing them when they start looking like this. But. I think like just about everyone else who bought one of these, I put the uh, silicon tubing in a safe place and I'll let you know when I figure out what that safe place was. Alright. Holy cow, I didn't even lift pad number four. That's incredible. Ooh, I did lift a pad on the charge port. Looks to be still attached, but it runs through a via that might not be connected anymore, so... We'll have some patching to do, even if we do get this thing plugged back in. You can see how much of the board is missing from the top. It did work, by the way. The cart slot is the last thing I messed with on this. Literally everything else I did beforehand. Some of these pads are a little bit questionable, but I think it should be fine once the um, 
cart reader gets on there. Looks like it might be shorted to something. I'd hate to have to lift this off again. Sorry, I'm moving slow. I'm trying to figure out the best, I'm trying to figure out the order of operations for putting this thing back together. <laughs> there's no wrong answer, but there's definitely a right answer. That is to say, putting the cart reader on last might be easiest uh, because it is the biggest piece and I don't have to work around it right now. So I'm thinking, let's go power switch. I lifted this power switch before I even realized, before I knew to clean them. So before I solder it back on, let's see if it needs cleaning. I bet it does. And by the way, here's, how you can, here's why they're so difficult to get off. They are latched, they're not just soldered. It's definitely easier to get the shielding off if you have the whole thing desoldered. But look at that, this thing's actually in surprisingly good shape. I'm going to clean it anyway because, you know, it's a part. But I sincerely doubt I would have had problems with this Game Boy. Ooh. And I know the people who are going to get their uh, panties all bunched up about this have already clicked away at this point, but for what it's worth, this thing was broken when I got it. I didn't, the board itself was very, very clean, but the SP was largely destroyed. Uh, this was a pearl blue unit that I bought from shopgoodwill.com. I actually bought two of them in the same auction, and they were both absolutely destroyed. Uh, for those that are not aware, the US Pearl Blue SPs, actually all really, really late model SPs, which just so happens to be the AGS 101s, um, among the late models, there are some batches that were made with a defective plastic, and over the years this plastic has uh, yellowed quite significantly. So if you look at the pearl blue SP, actually I need to, I need to flatten that out a bit. If you look at the pearl blue SP, let me grab... handy. For the first time in the history of my channel, I have no idea where my slate is right now. Um, keep getting distracted. Pearl Blue SPs, if you look under the paint, the plastic itself has turned green instead of blue. You've unfortunately got one of the brittle ones. Now, I don't know if it's just a sample size issue or if the other colors don't seem to have this issue, but I have gotten no verified claims of the pearl pink AGS-101 consoles having brittled, and I have received claims of the graphite consoles being brittled, but I haven't seen any evidence. Um, I've seen plenty of broken uh, graphite AGS-101s, unfortunately, but 
and it, it, this could be part of the defect, I'm not sure, but since I don't have one in hand, I cannot verify. Um, the plastic on those ones doesn't seem to discolor. It just, it apparently it just breaks, and that's the end of that. There we go. But it seems to mostly affect the pearl blues. And if the plastic underneath the paint is this greenish color on your pearl blue instead of a blue, unfortunately you could have one of the defects. And to make matters worse, it's not just the, like each body panel was made at a different factory with a different batch of plastics. So you could have a perfectly fine SP aside from like your battery cover or your top hinge or something. I accidentally got a capacitor, I think. Lift it up in the iron. I'm trying to find it now. Or maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't feel like there's a component in that solder ball. I'll have to double check. It's probably fine. So yeah, one of my pearl blues had a totally shattered hinge, and the other, the top lid on the unit was totally shattered. So they were both, both messed up. I took all the good parts from one of them, and took all the good parts from the other one, and then built one clean, good example out of the two. And I don't remember if that's one that I sold or if it's one that I still have. But this is the other one. So if I've ever posted pictures of a totally mangled pearl blue SP, this is that console. So far, so good. Unorthodox way to clean a power switch, but hey, if it works. Just making sure the switch is nice and flat. Cool. Now we will need a volume. Unfortunately, I do not have the correct part, but I have a part that will work. And it's not one of the wheels. It is an OEM part, but for a different console. Oh, there we go. That works nicely. I think I might just neglect it for now and come back to it. Because I should do... I suppose I should do the crystal. Let's use some hot air for that. I am going to desolder this. Not well, I suppose I can just melt it, it'll be fine. But I think the easiest way to resolder the crystal will be hot air, so let's 
go that route. One alternative is I suppose we could just overclock it, but I don't have a handy overclock kit to install at the moment. So we will not do that. Could also hand solder this, but I don't know, this seems to work. Yeah, there we go. Looks good. All right, what else do we need to test this? Surprisingly, it has a fuse. Uh, there's a fuse there too. It has the LEDs, it has a LCD connector. It doesn't have charge port L or R. Actually, the reason I chose this board specifically for the mod I'm planning is because it already doesn't have L and R. <laughs> I think there is an easier step in between. I could have just removed LNR from another board, but here we are. I will need this to test it. But while this is off, let us tear this apart. I don't suspect we will need to clean it, but it's literally already off. So let's check it. Like the power switch, the cart selector switch it actually works the exact same way one of the key differences is that theoretically it should only be switched while the console is off never while the console is on so it should have significantly less arcing but it is still possible to get some arcing I have no idea how this comes apart and I have clearly melted this previously I'd like to say it's because I used hot air to remove this, but no, it's because I used a heat gun. I don't think this is going to come apart. Well, hopefully it is not broken. You can see the casing is quite melted right there. It's actually melted on both sides where there wasn't any shielding. Well, never mind. We're not going to take that apart. Let us verify that it works, though. Multimeter. I am going to set my multimeter to, in this particular case, it looks like a sideways Wi-Fi symbol, little speaker symbol. That is continuity mode. Beeps when the two are connected, I believe. There we go. Those two are connected. And is that it? I guess so. And then when that is depressed, which I have no idea how I'm going to test this, but figure something out. Should be the outsides. Yep. And then the insides. Yep. So this should still be good.
start by tinning one of those. And luckily there are these little pegs on the bottom and holes in the motherboard to locate this stuff. So I just have to get it in the approximate location and then it'll kind of position itself. Apparently lost the ability to solder. Alright, fine. We will try a different pad. wasn't helping. I have also seen on some consoles that the switch itself doesn't need to be cleaned, but these solder joints need to be touched up. I've seen sometimes they just, they get brittle and since this thing does actually physically, you know, every time you insert a cart, you, you're rocking a cart against this thing. Um, solder joints can crack. One symptom of that is like if you're playing Game Boy Color games and then it just like resets into Game Boy Advance mode. Ooh, that was close. I'm glad I didn't try flicking that away. Go over there. That would have been painful. Alright, I think that's enough to test it. I will need to reconnect the battery cable, but I've already forgotten which way this goes. Pretty sure top is positive. Well, that's convenient. I have that right here. That goes like that, which means bottom is positive. Those are both awful solder joints, but this is literally temporary. I'm still missing that capacitor, but that is for audio, and I don't have a speaker plugged in, nor do I have a volume pot. I'm still missing the link port and charge port, but I'm not going to try charging it, and I'm not going to try linking it, not yet at least. And I'm still missing L and R, but oh well. It is what it is, I guess. Oh, and no card slot, so we won't be able to boot games. But we can at least see if it boots at all. Do I have a LiPo with the right connector spliced on? No, I do not. I should have checked that first. I have a LiPo, however, with that connector. Hmm. 
Alright. I gotta buy more of these things soon. Or not. I think I still have plenty. Never mind. Thinking out loud. Alright, let's place on a different connector. I suppose I'll clean those up. They're looking awful. Still an awful joint, but it is much better. And so is that. A little bit better. All right, now if I plug this in, either the smoke comes out or it just works. So here begins the troubleshooting. I swear this thing did work. Start with the simple stuff. It has a bad fuse. What do you know? I wonder if that's my doing. Let's double check the polarity rate. Ha! I see the problem. I blew the fuse. <laughs> How in the hell did that happen? All right. Cool. That's annoying. Where, why is my solder being so crusty? So now I have it wired up backwards. If you're following along at home for some reason, my SP is wired backwards. Because of course it is. I bet it would have just worked. But that battery, of course, was backwards. Never ever bridge a fuse. Fuses are safety devices. The only time it is acceptable, only time it is acceptable to test a device without a fuse is if you have a metered power supply and you have the current limit enabled. 
And of course you can't just leave it on and let it cook. Uh, if there is a short, you will very quickly find that short and you will very quickly kill some device, uh, usually CPU, but not always. See what I got. Oh, I have new fuses I need to test. Let me go find those. All right. I meant to test them, and what better way to test them than right here? These are one amp, six volt PTCs, which is a positive temperature coefficient something, something, something. Basically, it's a resettable fuse. In normal circumstances, they are not recommended for something like this because they uh, they do not blow as quickly as regular fuse. Those falling along at home, that's the part number. Got these ones in particular from LCSC. They are slightly more expensive than regular fuses, but I mean, Regular fuses are so freaking cheap that slightly more expensive is the difference between, like, what, two cents and twelve cents? But the problem is, when these blow, they go high resistance. Ugh. Let's try soldering to this side instead. They don't go completely open circuit, they just go high resistance. Which is not ideal, but in most cases works the same. Soldered, that's not soldered. Nice. I'm gonna have a heck of a time soldering on that cart slot the way I'm going. Alright, I think that's soldered now. Yeah. Good lord, okay. Let's try that again. Actually, let us cool that down first. PTCs work by regulating their temperature. Basically, like I said, they go high resistance when there's a short, when they go over current, rather. And the higher the current that flows, the higher temperature they go, and the higher resistance they go. At, at some point, you know, it's it's basically a, um, whatever you call those, feedback loop, it's a feedback loop. The hotter it gets, the higher resistance it goes, which at some point will effectively make it open circuit. Hey, I got a red light, which is hopefully a good thing. Nothing getting warm. Cool. Let's try it with the screen. Don't you hate when that happens? What's the point of the cheeseless bag? A 
resealable bag. It's not gonna freaking reseal. Ooh. So that is not working. Could be the kit. Let's double check though. Set that to voltage this time around. I'll bring that in. I'm going to place that on that because I know that's ground. And if I put that on the top of the fuse, we should see battery voltage, which in this case is 3.7 volts, which makes sense why we're getting the red light. So I'm going to go ahead and sw switch it on. And VDD5, I believe, is that test pad right there. We're getting 3.3 volts. That is not good. 3.6 volts, rather. VDD3, 3.3 volts. That's good. VDD. 1.8. Oh, that's probably VDD1, and the labels just cut off. So my concern is this 3.6 right there. Let's turn that off, disconnect that, try it again. VDD5, still 3.6. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. Actually, yeah, it probably is. Um, let's see what we got on the cart bus. We should have 3.3 volts. I need like three hands to do this. And let's try that. Now we're getting five volts. Okay, so let us. Whew. Okay, plug that in. Flip that. Turn on. That's on, but it's still nothing. All right, so let us rule out the backlight kit now. Fairly certain I have another one we can use to test. This works, but has no brightness control. That'll be fine. So I was booting. Problem is, I have no idea why that VDD5 is reading 3.6 volts, but the Game Boy itself is booting. So let's move on. And I will throw this in the troubleshoot pile, because that used to work. Alright, now I guess let's throw a cart slot on here and see if we can get a boot in games. Alright, so luckily someone, somewhere, found a cache of OEM unused cart slots. And normally I would save something like this for the collection, but I can think of no better use than just dropping one back into the Game Boy. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's why I'm not concerned with salvaging the other one.
usual method of get one pin soldered. I'm going to come to the other side, do the same exact thing. Do the anchors. There's one. There's the other. Now I don't feel uncomfortable handling it by that. And I am just going to do each one, one at a time, instead of doing the drag solder method because it is real tight. No, it's not soldered. That'll come back and bite me. There we go. I am a little concerned that the cart slot is not fully flush, but it's a little bit late for that. All right, there we go. After all that, this thing don't boot games. I'm going to be real disappointed. All right. Let's try it out with the game. 
have no idea what this is. Let's find out together. This might not be flashed. I know what this is. That's a problem. And that could be a clue as to why it's not working. This is a brand new card slot. I should not be having that problem. There is likely a short on one or several of these, or those two aren't soldered. to run that through with IPA. But they all look soldered to me now. Let's try it again. Hey, that was the problem. Look at that. She's a beaut. She's working. Now let me find. Oh, I know where my slate is. In my slate is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for my flashcard. Let me go grab that. Back to the earlier conversation about yellowed plastics. Boy Advance SPs. This is what I mean by that green plastic. This is green. This is supposed to be blue. Why it hasn't broken yet? Well, because I'm actually really careful with this. But beyond that, call it luck. buttons working. If I short that, that works. And if I short that, that works, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And it booted Pokemon Emerald, so I think we're good, but let's just double check one more thing. Let's make sure all these pass. And we're good. This thing is almost fully repaired. Let's get sound working, and then we will try Game Boy Color and double check that that's working too. For sound, we will need a potentiometer. Also have oh, here we go. I got these. This is a Nintendo DS OEM. 
volume uh, slider. It is identical to the SP slider in every way that I've been able to tell except for um, the specific footprint itself. Like these locating pegs are in a slightly different spot and the, the tabs are in a slightly different spot, but like electrically it's the same. Uh, and this plastic slider is a little bit different, but it does work, um, but it looks different. But it works, but it looks different. But anyway, the solution to the peg problem is quite literally one, two, and now the pegs aren't in the wrong spot, and we need to solder it down. But you see the two locate the two like ground tabs; those are in the wrong spot. You can bridge the solder, and it'll be good enough. But we have to locate it manually, which means paying attention to both sides, and we need to make sure it is straight flat and centered. I think that's good. So, what I did there, I had both sides lined up. Then, as soon as I had both sides lined up, I soldered down one side, then I soldered down the other side, then I went back to the first side, pressed it down to make sure it's flat, then I went back to the second side. So, I went back and forth several times, but each there was a method to the madness. Now, we need to get these anchored which is really just a matter of put a big solder ball there, be careful not to bridge the RAM. Unfortunately this is a big RAM model. But there we go. Now we need the capacitor, which this thing is probably still perfectly serviceable. So in it goes. Well, Actually, admittedly, I probably boiled it when I hot aired it off, but you got you got to work with what you got. So that'll go there. Audio should work without this capacitor, but it just won't have a whole lot of bass. And if there's one thing Game Boy games are known for, it is their high, heavy bass. So, definitely want this capacitor, or not, nah, it doesn't, literally doesn't matter. Come on, come on, stick, there we go. I couldn't get the tip angled right, which I hate when that happens.
Oh, good lord. That was very crooked. Good enough. And I have somehow managed to basically complete this project without soldering to these pads. And I will have to to do the next project, but until I get there, I'm going to not do that. It's all the way up. I heard something. save myself plenty of hassle if I just soldered this Jesus thing. There we go. Perfect. Everything's working. Cool. Now we just need link port and charge port. Uh, charge port I'm kind of at a loss for what to do. I think this might be a good candidate for a USB-C mod. On account of the lifted pad. Uh, link port, I think we're gonna have a similar problem. drop in a uh, link port. So just like the uh, cart slots, there have been caches of parts discovered. A perfectly OEM link port. I could drop this in and use that. The back three pads will solder and then the anchors will solder and then I'll just have to manually wire up the front three pins but I'm actually going to go for one of these aftermarket ports. I'm going to save this. Aftermarket ports are about the same. Tolerances aren't nearly as good, but everything's in nearly the same spot. The port's just a little bit proud, but we can work with that. Until I know for sure that this thing's working, I don't want to use up one of my nice OEM ports. Let's get that one first. That should hold it, I guess. <laughs> oh, 
Alright, now, I'm going to get lucky with this thing, because what I can do, and this would actually be a lot easier to test if I had another SP. Let me grab some parts here. That's not the SP parts bin. So here's of course another one that I've repaired, also an AGT. It's an eCPU, which means it has all these capacitors instead of test points. Neat, huh? Anyway. Uh, this one also has, conveniently, one of the uh, SP or DS volume wheels, but that is not why I grabbed this one. Why I grabbed this one, because we need the meter, I am fairly certain the link port works on this one. If we test pin 2, can't see what I'm doing. Let's lock that. Okay. Pin 2 goes to the middle pin on the top side of EM1. Pin 4 goes to the first pin of EM2. And pin 6 goes to the last pin of EM2. So we're good. Uh, that should be ground. I believe that is still grounded. Yep. This should go to that. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's get this thing wired up. And all these EM parts are, they are electromagnetic filters. Worst case scenario, if they're bad, we can bypass them. We shouldn't, but we can. I am going to prepare these pins for soldering. Get a nice juicy amount of solder on them. And I'm going to take some of my salvaged Kynar wire and get that soldered on there. And then I believe I said it goes to the middle pin of EM1. And I'm going to do something that's not very healthy, but it's the easiest thing to do with wire this short. I'm just going to melt the insulation back a little bit. Tin that. And get that soldered straight to the leg. Boom. There's one of them down. Ooh, I think it was time for a break an hour ago, but at this point I'm almost done. there. Not the prettiest joint, but easiest way to clean that up. Some flush cutters. And then 
this will go to the first pin of EM2. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And melt the insulation back just a little bit. And there's the second one soldered. And let us go for number three. It's a hair short shoot. I think it can still work. Mistakes were made. So what happens when you try and rush? straightening out the wire a little bit. I think it is just barely too short though. Let's just start over. Before wasting any more time on that. Now it is a hair too long. That should be easier to work with. Ta-da!
Now I need, wouldn't mind, a volunteer from the audience. working. Alright. Last thing I need is going to be a charge port. I have several options for charge ports. I have the OEM port. I can just drop it right back on there. Lifted pads, though, I'm a little bit concerned. I also have no place to anchor it. It would work, though. Alternatively, I have... I had... This messy desk of mine. Several USB-C mods. How do I... Ah, oh, there it is. Can install one of these. Not this one, this is for a 3DS. But this one for an NDS. Never mind. I might have one somewhere. Well, no, wait, hang on. NDS is... Oh, wait, NDS Lite. Well, actually, I guess that... That's that. If I don't have the proper USB-C mod, I don't want to install one. I'm just going to line this up and hope for the best. Eee. Pad is lifted, but still connected. to rewire some of these manually. But I might get lucky anyway. For the record, I cannot see basically anything that I'm doing right now. Alright, here goes the broken pad. If this port ever has to come off, that pad is probably coming off too. Hmm. I don't know a good
good way to fix that. Actually, that's not true. I can take a small cutting of brass rod, solder it to this anchor and to that square. That might work. Oh, speaking of might works, I think there's a little bit left of the pad there. Try soldering to it. Might have made more sense to try and expose more. No, but it looks like it's stuck. Okay. I think I see the same thing on this side too. It's a little bit, but it might be enough. All right. Try this out. I sincerely doubt this thing is going to charge. But we'll try it anyway. Yeah, doesn't charge. Go figure. That's okay. Let's figure out why. I mean, I already know why, because something's disconnected that shouldn't be, but... Oh wait, we want voltage. So I am fairly confident that number six is voltage, and number two is also voltage. And you can't see it, but I was just getting five volts on the meter. So we know the connector's good. All right. So now let us check if we have a good ground. And indeed we do. So we know the ground is fine, which means if we flip this over, we should see, I'm just gonna measure this backwards, that is gonna be ground, and then voltage would be on here? No, on this side, I believe. All right, I'm gonna have to double check this with a non-cut board. Of course, that one's gonna try and charge and then stop, but that's okay. We should see voltage on this side of EMA. Yep, cool. So I already checked that, I saw nothing. So let us rewire that, try it again. Wire, solder that. I think that's shorting. Let's double check before I go any further. Nope, we're good. All right, and normally there'd be no place to route this wire, but because there is a significant amount of PCB missing, we will just route that up and around this way. Just come down. Oh, 
will go right there. And since I have enough wire to actually grip, that means I have enough wire for the tool. Which means I can do that properly. I have no idea what my plan was to fix charging on this thing uh, back when I originally cut this up. I don't think I had a plan. I think I was just winging it, you know, burn that bridge when we cross it sort of thing, which is unfortunately more or less still my strategy, but at least... confident enough to fix it, usually. He says as he knocks over one of his lights. Ooh! It works, but I... I had an accident with the port. <laughs> I forgot that it wasn't it wasn't very well secured. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking in this particular case, my best option is gonna be to just super glue the Jesus thing. It's not a good option. But I don't really have that many. Uh, let's try let's try the brass rod. My concern is clearance. I want to make sure there is enough, and I don't think there will be. Actually, yeah, I'm I'm gonna skip the brass rod. I don't think there will be enough clearance. I'm gonna go straight for the super glue. But before we do that, let's get it cleaned up. A lot of flux. PCB even to glue that to. That is not great. It's basically hanging on by these pads and for those of you who've ever done a USB-C mod, you know exactly how delicate these pads are. Luckily they all the pins bent. Um, Oh, you know what? I could do brass rod on this side. That should be a ground. That should be already connected. Yep. Let's do brass rod. I'll make it work. Do I already have one of these trimmed? Yeah, there it is. Ta-da! I need a very short amount, and I don't know that this is the right tool. I don't want to ruin that tool. Here we go. I don't know that this is the right tool either, but it's a better tool. So there's a plan here. It's not a good plan, but it is a plan. I'm gonna put a nice
nice big ball of solder on this leg here. And on the end of this brass rod, and then just gonna have them kiss. For the record, I am fully aware that that is a terrible joint. That is temporary. Next, we're going to go in here and just tin up this square. And then just drown this thing in solder and hope for the best. That's a little bit much solder. I am uncomfortable with that much solder. That is a monster amount of solder. That was more solder than I wanted to remove. Still a lot of solder, but uh, just have to live with it. Now I'm probably gonna have to take that. Oh no, it came out. All right, that's awful, but I think it's the only choice we have. I'd like to reinforce that side too, but I don't know a good way to go about this. I can move that out of the way and then just tack these two legs together. I think that is my best shot. Oh, it's just a hair too long. I'd rather just a hair too short than a hair too long, because we can fill up the extra with solder. There we go, I can make this work.
Uh oh. Uh oh. Gosh darn it. This stuff never gets easier to work with, you know? At least not for doing stupid stuff like this. There we go. Now it's nice and sturdy. <sighs> okay. Very nearly complete. Let me double check that this is still operating as it is intended. And that we can just plug that in like that. Yep. Boom. One more test. And I honestly doubt this is going to work. But. Got to try it. Or, is that wire long enough? No, it's not. Well, I need headphones, and I don't really have any. So, I don't know what to do about this situation. Hang on. Don't worry, I have found a solution. Crank that volume. Pokemon Emerald. Oh! It's working! Not entirely though. We only have one channel. I only have... I think this is left. Yeah. We only have the left channel. We don't have the right channel. But that's good, because that means only the right channel is disconnected. If we had no channel, we would either have no audio ground or no detect switch. I don't know which. Uh, well, if I had a speaker plugged in, we could determine that. But since we don't have the right channel, I know it is just the right audio that is not working. And I'm willing to bet it's that one pad that's like all sorts of messed up. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how to verify this without looking up a schematic, which I suppose I could just do. I'll be right back. All right, so thankfully, the good man Gekyo has published schematics for the Game Boy Advance SP. And otherwise, I'd have to look up the pinout for that thing, but schematics easier. It's labeled on the back here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And I can see that right channel is pin three, which is not the pin I thought it would be. Let's double check that it's not just shorted. Or did I forget how to do math? One, two, three. No, it is the pin I thought it would be. There are no shorts, though. Okay. Where'd the rest of that wire go? I don't know, but here's a new one. needs to be connected to T3 
TP-106. Okay, Charter 3. I bet that needs to flip up, go around this way. And I bet it's one of those electromagnetic filters. We have EM4, EM5, and EM6. It is supposed to be connected to EM5, which is the middle one. And just to double check that I'm doing the right thing. Yep, that is not connected. Tin, the EM filter, which is thankfully still there. should be soldered down. Indeed it is. And I will just have to be very careful if I put this back together in something that has a battery compartment screw, which I don't think I am. But, just in case. Alright, here we go. Try one more time. Ooh, I should have unplugged that while I was working on it. I didn't even think about that. Hey, now I have both channels. So this thing is fully repaired. Hey, like them apples. Oh, I should see if if um, switching is working. Headphone switching. I didn't even think to check that. Right, so if we connect that up. I have audio. Plug that in. And then try connecting this up. Do not have audio. Perfect. Oh, it's fully repaired. <laughs> so the only thing left to do now uh, will would be to add a battery connector. But oops, I am going to not do that. I am going to leave that the way it is. I will solder on a different connector uh, and I will probably use a battery that is not reverse polarity because I don't hate myself that much. I'm just going to clean these up. Nice thing about a K-tip is it's real nice. You can just wipe solder off. You can't do that with the other tips. Right. There we go. Everything. Oh, nope. Got to test one. Ah, oh, shoot. I forgot to test Game Boy Color. Oh, well. You'll just have to take my word for it. It's probably fine. I didn't test it. I didn't repair the buttons because uh, we won't need those yet. Not where with what I'm going to be doing with this, but oh man, I'm so excited. Ah, uh, 
this is this thing has been such a uh, pain point for me for the longest time not because I didn't think I could fix it I always had a pretty good feeling I could but just because you know it, it, it is an old mod I I learned a lot of very hard lessons when I was working on this thing originally um, a lot of lessons about getting in over my head uh, granted I know basically more or less how to do what I was setting out to do and um, you know if I were to re-attempt that I think I would approach it in a much much different manner oh that is a concern those ports are uh, askew uh, well maybe it'll be fine We'll just go for it, I guess. Uh, anyway, yeah, if I were to attempt that again, I would approach it in a much, much different manner. Um, for starters, instead of trying to hand wire this thing, jeez, Liz, I would have soldered on a PCB that I created with a flat flex connector and just connected it up that way. Not only would the wiring have been simpler, I would have just had to, you know, without thinking, solder on the, the adapter and then plug in the connector. You know, the flat flex cables are a lot, a lot thinner than uh, IDE ribbon cables. Also, I had to use an IPS kit instead of trying to shove an AGS-101 LCD in there. And for the record, guys, I still have the LCD that goes, that originally went with that. It is... Tape to another Game Boy because of who I am as a person. But it is right here, still working, perfectly safe in another Game Boy Advance that I built. I did this a long time ago. This is my AGS 101, my IQ one, which is the Chinese OEM for Nintendo consoles in China. It's still Nintendo, they're just branded under a Chinese company. Um, so you, you pop this battery, or the, the bottom cover off, it still says Nintendo all over the board. The only external factor that I know of that's different is the white cart slot, but otherwise it is 100% identical. But there's the screen. Still perfectly happy, perfectly healthy. I did a lot of test fits with this screen in that shell that I butchered, but I was gentle with the screen itself. I was able to reassemble it, didn't have too many problems, but this thing, this is where I'm excited. Now we can get started on the real project, but uh, that's for another video. This has already been two hours of uh, nonsense, me screwing around with the soldering iron. Anyway, I think I'm going to end it here. Uh, apologies for the long video, but I know some of you guys like it when I just mess around with this sort of stuff um hopefully someone somewhere picked up something learned something from me um even if the lesson was do as i say not as i do and don't do that but either way i hope we're all good um i will try and throw some links down in the description to some of the parts i've used like this oem cart slot if they're still available if there's no link they're gone sorry it is what it is uh, I will also try and throw a link to Diffuse. Um, actually, no. I'm not going to throw a link to the Fuse. I'm going to trial this out a little bit more and make sure that I don't have any problems because I think I've tried one of these before and had issues, but I don't recall. Either way, you'll get ports if I can find them, link uh, cart slot. only thing we need now would be a battery connector, but in the thing this is going in, I can just hardwire a battery or use one of those connectors. It don't matter too much. But anyway, rambling time. I need to go take a break. I need to go take a walk. I've been at this way too long. I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day.